Hey everybody, I'm Jack, and today we're going to be breaking down my latest environment, King Arthur's Tomb, which is based off the amazing concept by Clive Almeida. I chose this scene because I just love the way the colours and light sort of tell this story of life coming back to this old forgotten tomb. I was really drawn to the mood of it and wanted to translate it into a 3D environment. I'd also never tackled a natural environment before, so I wanted to push myself out of my comfort zone and force myself to like learn. So I thought what a better way to do that than to remake this environment. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down five different tips or elements of the scene that I feel like you guys can learn the most from. So without further ado, let's get started. So I blocked out my scene using the BSP tools in Unreal. I used the camera as a way to sort of frame my scene and I did this so that I could try and match the composition of the original reference. Uh, this was sort of my top priority in the beginning of the uh, project. I then exported this BSB into Maya and started iterating on those existing shapes to sort of create something that resembled the actual reference a lot closer. Feedback was really important even at the blockout stage. Um, this really helped me improve my composition. Changing things like the scale of my shapes and the focal length of the camera really sort of brought back the verticality of the original scene and brought attention to the focus point. Since I did work from a reference image, I decided to just focus on this one camera angle. This really helped me in keeping the project focused and just allowed me to sort of put all my effort into this one frame and make sure I just push for quality to like as high as I could get it. After developing my block out, I would build a list of all the assets I made as well as any other assets that I would need to make. So this included things like meshes, materials, decals, unreal particle effects and lighting passes as well. I worked in phases to sort of keep the momentum of the project moving and have achievable goals. So for example, I split the project into like a block out pass, an alpha pass, a polish pass, and then another polish pass based on feedback I would get from different Discord communities. So to keep good positive momentum, my main goal was to sort of just prioritize finishing assets despite how rough they looked. Um, getting all the assets into the scene really helped me visualize the final project and sort of kept me motivated to keep working through the scene. From my own experience, it can be quite easy to get stuck on like one like minor asset, trying to get it perfect. Uh, I had to learn to give myself permission to just move forward. Uh, I'd always be able to go back and improve rough looking assets. So to keep good momentum, you should really just try and focus on the big picture and break the project down into small chunks. I couldn't use the standard high to low poly workflow when developing my larger assets. The UVs were just too big to fit into the UV space. So to keep the textual density consistent, I had to use other means to add detail to these larger models. So I used things like tileable textures, decals, vertex blending between two different materials detail normals and additional like smaller foliage assets to sort of build up that detail. I couldn't do this in a program like Substance Painter, I had to do it in the game engine itself. I could also have used edge decals and trim textures to add detail to these larger assets, but in my case I did try this and the details were just too subtle and didn't read well on the actual asset so I opted to sculpt the detail into the mesh instead. There's loads of different ways you can add detail to these larger assets. You just need to sort of experiment and find what works best for you. I 
find the key to developing a strong scene is to use lots of different elements uh, subtly and build them up on top of one another to sort of build something that feels real, something that feels like it's got history and sort of tells a story. So in terms of materials, you could use lots of different noises, patterns and grunges and lay them on top of one another with different sort of blends to tell the story. Things like the roughness channel especially, like really goes a long way in uh, building up that narrative. Uh, if you think about what these materials have been through and reflect that into the material itself, it'll go a long way in creating something that feels real. This mentality also applied to the particle effects in my scene. In my case, I used lots of different ones from the Unreal project. Initially though, I had one blanket volumetric fog and one intense god ray and these effects just flattened out my scene and didn't really add to the depth in the way I wanted them to. To remedy this, I used lots of different fog cards, uh, set them at lower intensities and placed them at different levels of my scene to sort of break up elements and add that depth back into the scene. In terms of a god ray, I just made it as subtle as I could to just imply it was present in the scene, rather than making it obvious that it was there. Be subtle but also be intentional about how you build up different elements of your scene. I believe that is the key to create something that is interesting to look at. When getting feedback, I always try to ask specific questions about my scene, areas that I feel could be improved, but I can't exactly pinpoint a solution. This is so I can prompt an answer from people rather than leaving things too open and vague. I used a bunch of different Discord communities to get feedback. I do try to collect my feedback and organize it into a spreadsheet mainly so I can build an action plan around addressing things and make sure I don't miss anything. Yeah, so I hope you got something from this video and you can sort of apply it to your own projects. One of the things I want to improve on in my next scene is the quality of my assets. I think this is probably my weakest area right now. Uh, so I really want to create something that's smaller in scale, uh, but where I can really focus on the quality of the scene. Uh, so I will be documenting this in its own video series. Uh, I'll be making the two alongside one another. So subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss those videos and also follow me on our station as well. Uh, the link to that is in the description below. And um, yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, yeah, so I hope you got something from this and I'll see you in the next videos.